When you consume sugar, your body breaks it down into glucose, which your cells can use as fuel to perform many different functions. It's found in various foods and beverages like fruits, vegetables, baked goods, and sweet drinks. That's right, sugar is even found in vegetables, so it's not inherently bad. But consuming too much sugar can have adverse effects on your body, your health, and your weight. So in today's video, I want to give you the step-by-step -step process of what happens as you eat sugar based on all the available scientific data. It all originally begins when sugar first makes contact with your tongue. Immediately, it undergoes a complex process of digestion and absorption, which is critical to providing your cells with the energy needed to carry out their tasks. So there are enzymes in your saliva that'll start to break down the sugar molecules into simpler, smaller molecules. These enzymes are known as amylases, and their job is to break the chemical bonds between the glucose and fructose molecules that make up sucrose, converting it into simple sugars. From there, the sugar moves to your stomach, where it gets mixed with gastric juices and enzymes. These enzymes help separate the individual sugar molecules from other components of the food or beverage that you consumed. Once that's done, the sugar moves from the stomach into your small intestine. This is where the bulk of the absorption process actually takes place. Here, the sugar gets further broken down by enzymes and then gets absorbed into your bloodstream. Glucose is absorbed directly into your bloodstream, while fructose is absorbed more slowly and primarily metabolized in the liver. Once the glucose reaches your bloodstream, it gets transported to your cells, where it's used as fuel for things like contracting muscle tissue, supporting brain function, and producing hormones and enzymes. Unfortunately, just like fructose and other forms of sugar, if you consume more glucose than your body needs, the excess will get converted into glycogen, and that excess glycogen will first be stored in your liver and muscles. Since your body doesn't need it at the moment, this glycogen can be used later as a source of energy when your body does in fact need it. That's great because throughout human evolution, we often have had to go for extended periods of time without food. The stored glucose alongside with the stored body fat helps act as an energy reserve in these kinds of scenarios. Now, if your body has reached its glycogen storage capacity, any excess glucose is converted into fat and stored in your adipose tissue. This excess fat can lead to weight gain and obesity if it tips you over into a calorie surplus. Another obvious effect that'll happen after sugar enters your bloodstream is that it'll raise your blood sugar levels. This causes your body to release insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas that helps to regulate your blood sugar. The way it does this is by removing glucose from your bloodstream and then funneling it into your cells where it can be used immediately for energy. That's a really good thing because having elevated blood glucose levels, also known as hyperglycemia, can lead to some very bad side effects like damaging heart health and increasing inflammation. The problem, however, is that consuming too much sugar can negatively impact insulin production and insulin response. Excessive sugar consumption can cause the pancreas to work so hard at excreting insulin that you can develop insulin resistance, a condition in which your body becomes less responsive to this very important hormone, insulin. This means that your body has to produce more insulin to achieve the same effect on controlling blood sugar levels. Research links insulin resistance to a range of health issues such as type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and cardiovascular disease. Like I said, when your body becomes resistant to insulin, your pancreas will have to work harder to produce more insulin, which over time can lead to pancreatic burnout and a decrease in insulin production, also known as type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a chronic condition that's characterized by high blood sugar levels due to insulin resistance and a reduction in insulin production. It's estimated that about 462 million people around the world are affected by type 2 diabetes, which is a little over 6% of the entire world's population. This number likely will only increase over the upcoming years and decades because people are more obese and continue to eat unhealthier than ever before. The adverse effects on insulin production that come from consuming too much sugar are largely due to the effects of fructose, which is a type of sugar found in many processed foods and beverages. Unlike glucose, which most of your cells can innately metabolize, fructose is primarily metabolized by the liver. Consuming large amounts of fructose can overwhelm the liver's capacity to metabolize it, leading to the creation of harmful byproducts like uric acid and free radicals. These byproducts can further contribute to insulin resistance, inflammation, and other negative health effects, making the associated problems even worse. Now, you might think that these effects of a high sugar intake only apply to processed sugars like the ones found in sugary beverages, ice cream cookies, cakes, and candy. But that's simply not true. Even natural sugars like those found in honey and fruit juices can have similar effects when consumed in high amounts. 
However, the benefit of unprocessed foods like fruit is that they contain decent amounts of fiber, which reduces how fast the sugars get absorbed in your body. With that said, it's important to understand that juicing breaks down the fibers, which is why fruit juices like orange juice still provide a rapid spike in blood sugar levels and as a direct result, a large spike in your insulin levels as well. That's why it's generally better to eat whole fruits compared to juicing them. It's also much better to blend fruits in a blender rather than juicing them as this maintains most of the fiber. So since we now know how dietary sugar impacts blood sugar and insulin, let's take a look at what happens to your brain and your mood when consuming sugar. These effects can be significant for a number of reasons. The first one being that sugar activates the reward center of the brain. It essentially causes a release of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin, which are responsible for feelings of pleasure and well-being, and they play a critical role in regulating your mood. However, just like consuming too much alcohol or drugs, consuming too much sugar can lead to a negative feedback loop in your brain and have a negative influence on your mood. One of these negative effects that I'm sure you've heard of is a sugar crash, which happens when your blood sugar levels spike only to then rapidly drop. This can lead to feelings of fatigue, irritability, and difficulty concentrating. On top of that, consuming too much sugar can also lead to chronic inflammation in the brain, which is one reason why research links sugar to a range of neurological disorders like depression, anxiety, and dementia. Inflammation in the brain also produces oxidative stress, which can damage cells and contribute to the aging process. This is one of the reasons why diets high in sugar are believed to contribute to the development of dementia. But it doesn't just end there. Sugar also impacts the hippocampus, a key memory center of your brain. Research found that rats eating high sugar diets were less able to remember whether they had previously seen objects in specific locations beforehand. The sugar induces changes in the hippocampus where both a reduction in newborn neurons, which are vital for encoding memories, and an increase in chemicals linked to inflammation. Now, coming back to dopamine, one reason consuming sugar makes us feel good in the moment is because it increases the levels of this feel-good neurotransmitter. So consuming sugar leads to a rapid increase in dopamine, which contributes to feelings of pleasure and well-being. However, over time, consuming lots of sugar can decrease your dopamine receptor sensitivity, meaning that your brain needs more and more sugar to achieve the same effect. This is the same process as what happens when you consume cocaine. It vastly increases dopamine levels, which makes you feel good. But those same high levels also decrease dopamine receptor sensitivity, meaning that you'll actually feel worse than normal when you don't consume the drug, and that's why many people get addicted. They constantly need to keep getting that hit to feel good or even normal once they're heavily addicted. In addition to dopamine, consuming sugar can also affect serotonin levels. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that's important for regulating mood, appetite, and sleep. Overall, consuming too much sugar can adversely impact the brain and mood in other ways, such as by causing blood sugar crashes, chronic inflammation, changes in the brain structure and function, and alterations in neurotransmitter levels. That's why it's a good idea for your cognitive health and your performance to reduce your intake of processed sugars, such as those found in cookies, candies, and sodas. But that's not the only reason that it's best to limit your processed sugar intake. Another well-known reason is that eating sugar is a major contributor to weight gain and obesity. There are many ways that sugar contributes to fat gain, but the main one is that sugar isn't effective at satiating hunger, and due to this, it's typically added on top of the calories people already consume anyway. It's for this reason that many studies show that people who drink soda and other sugary beverages tend to weigh more than those who don't. Most people don't even realize how much sugar they have on a daily basis. The average American has about 270 calories of added sugars per day. That equals a little under 1,900 calories per week, the equivalent of about half a pound of body fat. The nice thing is, however, that it also works the other way around. Ridding your diet of sugary sodas reduces calorie intake and promotes weight loss. Ideally, you want to replace soda with healthy beverages like sparkling water, tea, or coffee. But if you want some sweetness, it's also fine to add some diet soda since many studies show substituting sugary foods and drinks with artificially sweetened alternatives like diet sodas lowers calorie intake and supports weight loss. Most human studies also show that artificial sweeteners are generally safe when the maximum recommended daily amount is not exceeded. This applies even to the often demonized artificial sweeteners, aspartame and sucralose. One exception might be saccharin. While most human research shows saccharin to be safe, some evidence found impaired gut health and glucose tolerance in some of the participants. So you may want to avoid drinks and foods with this artificial sweetener, saccharin. 
Speaking of which, aside from simply increasing your calorie count, there is actually another way that consuming sugar can produce weight gain, and that's through the disruption of your gut microbiome. Your gut microbiome is a collection of bacteria and other microorganisms that live in your digestive tract, and they play a crucial role in regulating your metabolism and immune function. Consuming high amounts of sugar can alter the composition of the gut microbiome, which can lead to an increase in hunger and, as a result, ultimately cause weight gain. Other organs, like your heart, are also impacted by sugar. Consuming high amounts of sugar can lead to adverse effects on your heart health and is linked to an increased risk of developing high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and of course, heart disease. Sugar also impacts your teeth quite a bit. That's because sugar is a primary fuel source for the bacteria found in your mouth, which can lead to the production of acid that erodes your tooth enamel, leading to tooth decay and cavities. This is why even consuming sugary drinks such as soda and sports drinks can increase the risk of developing dental erosion, which can lead to tooth sensitivity, discoloration, and the loss of tooth structure. To sum it all up, consuming sugar can have both positive and negative effects on your body and your health. While sugar provides energy for your cells, your muscles, and your brain, excessive consumption can lead to weight gain, obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels, heart disease, and dental issues. On top of that, consuming high amounts of sugar can affect your brain and mood, leading to cravings, addiction, and an increased risk of developing mood disorders such as depression and anxiety. That's why to maintain optimal health, I'd recommend limiting your sugar intake to no more than 10% of your daily caloric intake, or about 50 to 60 grams of added sugar per day at most. Consuming less than that will help you manage your body fat percentage as well as the other negative effects that come with having too much sugar. So that about wraps it up. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this one. Also, if your goal is to cut back on sugar to try to lose some weight, you have to understand losing body fat and keeping it off isn't only about cutting out sugar. The rest of your diet and workout plan is equally as important. For that reason, I have a free done for you challenge that's helping my clients drop either 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in just six weeks. With our six week shred program, you'll get a 42 day workout plan with a full video exercise library, a customized diet plan with a recipe book and an accountability coach that'll check in with you every week and help guide you through the entire process. And my guarantee to you is that if you simply follow our plan for 42 days straight without cheating and without quitting, we'll give you the whole program for free. To learn more, you can click the link below or you can visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.